well, whether you have people coming over last minute or you just don't wanna spend multiple days cleaning your house, today we're gonna to share our favorite speed cleaning tips, both from professionals and some tried and true methods from our own house too. So tip number one is to schedule it in. What do professional cleaners do? They have a schedule, right? So when are you gonna clean each week? Schedule it in and try to stick to it. And if you fail the first time, just try again. Tip number two is to start in the same place every time you clean. So if you ever had a professional cleaner come to your house, often they're gonna start with the toughest spots, the stuff that takes like the most scrubbing or cleaning, and that's often the bathrooms. So we're gonna start here and work our way that way in the house. Tip number three, of course, is to have everything with you that you need to clean this space. Now, you could have one of those cool caddies or you could just make sure when you come into a space that you have everything. Like for here, we don't keep a toilet brush in here. I just keep it in the other bathroom. So I had to go grab it in the toilet bowl cleaner to bring in here. Beyond that, I can do pretty much everything with an all-purpose cleaner and a microfiber cloth. I have this uh, pink stuff cleaner. It's nice, it's fine, I don't know. My goal in the upcoming year is to use up all of my household cleaners, so that's what I'm gonna do. And I, I think the real magic is the microfiber cloth, so I'm gonna use this for the mirrors and everything. I don't think it actually matters. <laughs> But I'm actually getting a little ahead of myself because if the space isn't already picked up and tidied up, tip number four is to start with the floor. When you clean, you clean from top to bottom. When you tidy, you tidy from floor on up. And that's because our brains actually register stuff on the floor as a threat. So think back to when we were wild in nature, I don't know, our brains were constantly scanning down low for threats. That's often where threats would come from, predators and things that would surprise us. But it's still actually wired into us when we enter a space to scan the floor for threats. So clutter, uh, dirty laundry on the floor can actually be perceived as that. Isn't that wild? <laughs> so literally wild. So I'm gonna pick up all this stuff on the floor quick then we'll turn our attention to the vanity. Also, tip number five is to not actually have to leave the space at all. So I do need to obviously make one trip out of here to the laundry room. So I'm just gonna look and see if there's anything else in here that needs to leave because after this trip, I don't wanna leave this space again. All right, so I found a glass for the kitchen and a hair clip that goes in the other bathroom. I'm gonna go put this stuff away quick and then we're gonna get cleaning. All right, so I'm just gonna tuck away a couple more things here quick, and then we're gonna get cleaning. So I love what Cass from Clutterbug says, is that it has to be just as easy to put stuff away as it is to leave it out. So what I love about how we've simplified and decluttered our bathroom is that it is super easy to put stuff away. I don't mind if it sits out most of the time because it's stuff that gets used a lot, but when I'm coming to clean, I wanna be able to quickly and easily tuck stuff away so we can actually get to cleaning. And next, make every movement count. Professional cleaners don't circle a room more than once. Taking their place before the bathroom sink, they'll spray and wipe the mirror, scrub the sink, wipe down counters, and polish fixtures before they move one inch to the right or left. Don't get physical with your cleaning sessions. Make every movement count. Stand fast and clean everything in your path before you move on. Now, I love this tip. It says invest in proper tools. Professional cleaners don't use gadgets. You'll never find them toting specialized one-use tools or gee whiz gimmicks hawked on some television infomercial. Forget flimsy supermarket cheapies and invest in sturdy, well-made cleaning tools. And honestly, that's where I feel like having some good microfiber cloths that really there's not much I can't do. I do like this tip too, when you're done with the toilet brush, close the lid on it and uh, let it drip dry a little bit before you put it back into the holder. All right, I did forget one thing. I forgot to bring the broom in here. So I'm gonna go grab that. We'll give this room a quick sweep and we are actually done in here. And I did end with this microfiber cloth on the toilet. So this one is gonna go into the wash and I'll grab a new one before I do anything else. All right, so like I said, we're moving from that end of the house this way, so now we're gonna work on the kitchen. Now, in a perfect world, this room would already be picked up and all I'm actually doing is cleaning, not also tidying up and putting stuff away, right? But if there is stuff out, again, we wanna minimize our steps, so I'm gonna start from that end of the counter and work my way that way. Try not to leave the space if possible, but if I do have to leave, I'm gonna try and limit it to only one trip. Okay, so this is actually my new fascination. <laughs> this, oh, it's so bubbly. This is my uh, sourdough starter. I, we're gonna make some bread. Um, Lisa from Farmhouse on Boone has totally got me turned on to this and 
we've actually been quite successful with uh, making some bread. So we'll get that started in a little bit. I have cleaning to finish first. I really would much rather just stop and make bread, <laughs> but that's okay. So I am gonna leave this. I'll probably just put it on the dining table um, for right now while I get everything else cleaned up, but I am kind of excited about this. <laughs> Okay, so I worked my way from right to left on the center island, and now I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna start over here and work my way around. And again, I have my cleaner. I switched over to more of a dishcloth in here, um, but I'm gonna try and tidy and clean as I go. So every time I clean my kitchen, I have the same set pattern. Sometimes I walk in and I feel kind of overwhelmed because there's a bunch of stuff on the island, and I'm like, nope just do the pattern. <laughs> like if we can just make this very automated, very systemized, it makes it so much easier and I'm much more successful with it. I have finally got one of these plastic scrapers now too and it works really well for the stuff that gets stuck on, especially like eggs. We make a lot of eggs around here. Inevitably there's yolk stuck to the stove, right? That works so well. <laughs> Another tip I've learned is to try and work double time. Sometimes when there's just like a lot of cleaning to do and I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed, I need to try and challenge myself to work faster. I can start to slow down and I'm like, what would a cleaning person do? They would work quicker, <laughs> right? So putting on some upbeat music also helps with this. I've tried to like listen to podcasts and things in the past, but I find that it kind of like slows me down or I'm not actually paying attention to what it is that I'm listening to anyways. And so I find that upbeat music actually helps me way more when I'm cleaning than anything else. Now, this is the point where I could start to feel a little frustrated and defeated because I'm in a groove now. I wanna just keep cleaning, but there are pots and pans here that need to be scrubbed. But the reason they didn't go in the dishwasher with the rest of the dishes is because they need to be hand washed. And so what I have to tell myself here is that it won't actually take as long as you're thinking. <laughs> like right now I'm like, oh, it's gonna take so long to wash all these, like what a pain. Using my scraper again, this really, this is such a great tool. I don't know why it took me so long to get one. <laughs> it won't actually take that long. I've already had this one soaking. This pan washes up super easily. And I know uh, what's in here won't take that long either. So I just need to get after it and stop whining about it. <laughs> All right, so that didn't even take four minutes and I was building it up in my head to be so horrible. All right, so um, let's see. I do wanna clean the sink real quick. There's a couple dishes. I'm gonna throw these um, into the dishwasher and then we can scrub the sink quick and keep working our way around the counter here. And then we're practically done in the kitchen. Now, if the sink were a little dirtier, I would probably mix up my Dawn and vinegar solution, but it's not too bad. So I'm just sticking with my pink stuff cleaner and then I'll just use like a green scrubby thing too. That's a little more abrasive. So, um, so far my single cleaner is working just fine. And so the sink's done and now we're just gonna keep working our way around the rest of the counters and then the kitchen is almost done. It's funny because in the past, um, I hated cleaning. Like I despised it. And even today, like I wasn't excited about it, but I know now that even when it looks like the kitchen's kind of messy, it doesn't take long to pull it back together. And because I don't have to spend so much time picking up and tidying up, I've been doing more consistent cleaning, so the cleaning isn't as hard. So it's just still so amazing to me that as we've continued to simplify our house, keep it decluttered, that everything is just so much easier. <laughs> so of course that's one of my tips too, is to simplify your house, declutter it, and then all of these systems that we try to put in place run so much more smoothly. And you know, I always, in my head, I skip over the living room when it comes to cleaning because I don't think of it as a room that needs to be cleaned because we keep it so simple. Um, it does need to be vacuumed. And for anyone who thought, oh, you should let the kids and Tom use your new throw pillows. Can you tell? They've, uh, yeah, they've definitely been being used. So, <laughs> Ugh, we're gonna straighten up this room. Today's video is sponsored by Allform. You can see how abused the pillows are. The couch gets abused just as much, but it has held up so well. We continue to be so happy with our Allform sofa. And what I love the most about it is that we got to design it ourselves to specifically fit our space here. So all form is modular furniture, modular sofas and chairs, and you get to go online and like I said, you customize it to fit your space and your taste. And so for us, we have a three seat sofa with a chaise end and it's in the color teal. The fabric is stain resistant, pet friendly, it cleans up so well and has worn so well. Tom and I were just remarking on it the other day, we're like, 
how have we had this for well over a year now and it's not dirty but yet like the pillows look destroyed right like we've we've switched out the pillows multiple times since we've had the sofa we don't know it's like this magical material but even if we have gotten something on it you'd grab a microfiber cloth and it cleans up so well so we really appreciate that they also have some leather options that are beautiful as well so you go online you design your perfect sofa for your space and then it gets shipped to your house shipping is free within the US but it comes in these really manageable size boxes they're so easy to bring into your house and then to set up your sofa and so we love that about it you can put it together in really a matter of minutes but it's also very sturdy and the kids have proven that as well so you get it in you get it set up you also get a hundred days just to test it out make sure it's a really great fit for you and your family and that you love it as much as we do I mean let's face it you actually spend a lot of time on your sofa right whether you're watching TV playing games reading just relaxing our sofas get a lot of use so it's important that it's just the right fit for you if you use our link down below you can save 20% off your own all form sofa or chair and then you'll have something that fits your space perfectly as well and then your family well hopefully they're a little nicer to it <laughs> than our than our kids are but uh, this room again I really intentionally keep this room simple because it is so easy to clean we just vacuum it quick I mean the main thing is keeping the Legos up off of the floor um, there are usually Lego creations on this table. I've said before, we don't keep a lot of Lego inventory. We just have two small plastic bins that they fit in, but it is still amazing to me how they can play for hours and hours with Legos right there at that table. So like I said, I often don't even think about it when it comes to cleaning because the kids can actually completely take care of this room all by themselves. Well, except apparently for the pillow situation, I'll help with that. Okay, so again, with the dining room, I'm gonna start with the floor to tidy up and pick up, and then I'll move my way up to the flat surface. We've just had seasonal stuff accumulating there. Actually, this is kind of fun. I just got a box of our books in as well, our De Decluttering by Faith devotional, but let's get back to work. And again, I only want to leave this room once, so I'm gonna do a quick scan to see what else doesn't need to be in here. The books don't, but that's gonna take a, a separate trip. This is a Christmas gift, so I'm gonna put it with my Christmas gifts. This, ah, this is not mine. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. All right, I also have some binoculars and wrapping paper, so I have to go that way and this way, so I'm just gonna do it all quick. <laughs> okay, so like this is super cool, right? But it's like all this stuff that comes in and then it's like, and now where do I put it, <laughs> right? So I'm trying to decide like where is the best place. Well, I guess now I could bring it out to my office because I actually have like an office, which is kind of fun and new. So it's just, it's not done out there yet. It's still a little bit, there's be more construction going on. So I don't know. Um, I think there should be room in the cabinets underneath the computers over there. So I think I'm gonna bring that there. And then this was just some extra packing material that can get recycled and you know, one of the kids' things, so I'll take that with me. And then this is a gift that we need to give um, and that we need to bring with us. So I'm gonna put this in the entryway so that we don't forget it. And then we're getting pretty close here. <laughs> All right, this is Tom's chapstick and a receipt. I know where the receipts go. I don't know where he would want this. Um, Probably on top of the fridge okay all right here's the other problem then with me <laughs> having this sourdough infatuation at the moment is I bought a bunch of flour because if you bought so much you got free shipping or whatever and it was like cheaper um, and so now I have to find a spot for that too I think I'm gonna put it in the extra bedroom for now it's not ideal but see this is like there's just always stuff coming in right I'll probably just need to get rid of something else to make room for it officially, which I'm totally fine with, but that will be a problem for another day. Um, I'm gonna shake out the tablecloth and then we can sweep this space too. And like I've shared before, for me in the beginning, minimalism was just a cleaning tactic. It was just a hope that, okay, maybe I'll be able to keep the house picked up and keep it fairly clean and I won't feel like such a loser of a mom, <laughs> you know? And so it's, it's still so surprising to me what a huge difference it makes in every area of our life now and how much more smoothly our home runs now that we've simplified so much. Like 
meal planning is easier, cooking at home is easier, keeping up on the laundry is easier, keeping the kids' rooms is easier, picking up toys is easier. It, like every area of our house just functions so much better now that we now that we have so much less inventory to manage. And so I just want to encourage you. Like I was, I would never been a clean person. I never thought I would be making like a clean with me video, <laughs> right? I, I realized it was just because I was trying to manage too much inventory and I had too much stuff that I was always trying to shuffle around that I was too busy taking care of the stuff that I never actually got to the cleaning, right? And so now I actually do at times find it kind of enjoyable <laughs> to clean. I understand those of you now who are like, like cleaning, but I'm still not spending like hours and hours a week on it. I can do it in a, in a very small amount of time. It feels like just the right amount of time <laughs> for me that I would want to spend on something like this, like cleaning. So I guess we're done in here. It's a pretty simple room, <laughs> right? But why don't we head into the other bathroom now? Now in our house, each of the kids have like areas of the house that they pick up every day. And so like this room is actually fairly picked up right now, um, which is good. Like when I can walk in and I'm like, oh, it's not so bad. I'm like, some of our systems are actually working, right? And so it takes time. We've had to make adjustments, figure out what works for the current ages and stages of our kids. But for right now, <laughs> with the season we're in, this has been working. Doesn't mean I don't have to remind them or harass them at all to do it, but. So I will tuck away though, like our electric toothbrushes and stuff so we can just work on cleaning the actual surfaces. And the question often comes up too, do you have a set cleaning schedule? And right now I don't. We pick up and tidy up the house every day and then I usually clean on kind of an as needed basis or if someone's going over, <laughs> right? So I don't have a set routine or schedule, but it does seem to mostly get done on a regular basis. And also another tip, don't underestimate the power of body doubling. So again, that's where we have someone else with us working alongside of us. They don't even have to be doing the same thing, but literally having someone else in the space with us. And so kids can actually fill this this role, right? So I would be curious how you like to clean. Cause some days like today, I'm like everybody out of the house, like upstairs, downstairs, outside, I don't care, but leave me alone. I just wanna get some cleaning done. And I put on music and I clean and I get a lot done. And then other times I'm like, ugh, I don't feel like it. And so I'll be like, okay, all hands on deck. Everybody go to your areas. You need to tidy it up, but then we also need to like actually clean it too. And I have them work. I still end up doing like the majority of it or a lot of it, especially like the actual like cleaning, but just having them around, having that accountability really seems to help. And so I think it kind of depends. I don't know, if, is it the mood you're in or I don't know uh, how much work there needs to be done. I definitely like having the kids as like runners too. You know, I'm like, run this there, go bring this there. Um, that's really helpful too. Um, but yeah, sometimes I like having them help. Other times I'm just like, Leave me alone, I'm gonna clean. <laughs> All right, if you wanna mix up some sourdough with me now, now that we're done cleaning, this is the reward, right? So I'm gonna mix up some sourdough, show you how easy it is um, to make it in a bread maker because I like thought it was gonna be like so hard and that's why I didn't do it for a long time. So we can mix it up and I'll kind of tell you the basics in like, how I got the starter and, and all of that and how easy, how easy it actually is. Okay, so what I did was I melted a half stick of butter and here's the pan that we make it in and then this is a little thing in the bottom that actually needs it. You just dump your half stick of melted butter in and then we're gonna add one and a quarter cups of uh, filtered water. And then we're gonna add four cups of flour. How this came about, I was um, recording a podcast episode with Lisa from Farmhouse on Boone. It's on her um, podcast thing, on her podcast, I don't know. I'll link to it down below. Um, but I said, Lisa, I really wanted to make sourdough bread, but are there any ways that you can make it in a bread machine or a bread maker? And she said, funny you should say that. I just did a blog post on that. And she said, you can get an inexpensive bread machine and it will do everything in it for you. And so I knew for myself where I'm at right now, the only way I'd be successful is if it was like fairly hands off. So you do have to feed the sourdough starter every day if you have it out and you're using it. Otherwise you can just put it in the fridge and it can live in there. But it's actually really easy to create a sourdough starter and to get this process going. I don't know why, I just, I thought it seemed so hard and complicated. And so Lisa has a couple videos that are super helpful. So like I said, I'll link to those. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is, I found it works best if you make like a hole 
in the middle for your starter to go into. All right, and then we're also gonna add a half tablespoon of salt and then two tablespoons of sugar. So again, what I'm learning is you just wanna make sure it's like really bubbly and active um, when you do it. So I've been feeding this once a day and I think you're not supposed to put metal in it, is what Lisa said, but uh, you know, this is what we have right now, so. And then I'm just gonna put it right here in the middle, trying not to let it touch the sides. If the starter touches the sides, it kind of causes like the flour and stuff to stick on it. It's not a huge deal. Okay, and then now we can put it into the bread machine and it is gonna do all of the work for us. So I'm just gonna put it on the kneading cycle and then I run two 25 minute cycles for that. But it's all, like the mess is contained to here. This does all the kneading. Um, so after it's, it, we do two cycles of 25 minutes of kneading, then we'll let it sit and rise in the machine until it doubles in size or kind of until it gets to the top of the pan again. And then we just bake it for an hour and it's good to go. So it'll need just a little bit of time yet. And then I'll show you, we've made like six or seven loaves now. We've only had one not turn out, but I didn't realize that the, the starter wasn't active enough. Now I know what to look for. But other than that, it's actually been super easy and gone really well, um, and it's been kind of fun. So hopefully this one will turn out too, and then I can show it to you. All right, well, I know we were talking about cleaning today and not so much as decluttering, but even when I'm cleaning, I am always just reevaluating everything. Like, does this need to be in here? Are we still using it? And I'm still so aware that stuff is still always coming into our house, right? With six people, it just happens, or with new hobbies, right? Like, I was very aware, I'm like, if I'm gonna buy a bread maker and then I'm gonna buy all this flour and stuff, something else is probably gonna have to go. And I'm okay with that because inevitably there is stuff now that I'm not using, even though I might have used it in the past season or whatever. And I know now just let it go, make room for the new thing that we're doing, and that's what's gonna help keep it so that our house is still really easy to clean and to tidy up and really enjoyable to be in. So. It's a constant shuffle, <laughs> right? But I just look at stuff so much differently now, so it, it definitely is easier than it used to be. So keep going. It, it gets easier and easier. And what do you think? I think this bread actually turned out pretty well. So, so you don't have to have a bread machine to make it. Uh, I'll link to some of Lisa's resources if you're interested in trying this out, but only do it if you have like the bandwidth for it, right? Like, don't, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say everyone should go start making sourdough bread now. Not saying that at all. I just, it's been kind of fun. So I wanted to show you. All right, well, I love you. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you again soon.